So I was actually trying breaking into it. They probably would have targeted this one, wouldn't they? Because of what it is. How many hours do you think before the forensic police team will want to come out? She was not happy. She came in and told us it was not good enough. This looks like a Mercedes that's going to leave a ramp and a Porsche. That Look at that, she's purring. But I think she's had some food poisoning. So she was up half the night making dinosaur noises. Suicide doors, baby. I've started doing some website building. I'm trying to get a shifting metal website off the ground. So yes, it is Sunday. Well, George wants me to be uh, taking an engine at 3.30D. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. It's Monday. It's episode seven of the Borough Motors Weekly. It's now around about midday, haven't filmed anything as of yet. I've been busy. Toby and I have run through a video for the auctions, made a couple of little notes, Toby's edited that. I've just given a lift to Dan over to James at J Repairs. We've picked up a little Panda 4x4 that he'd done some paint on, so that can now go out to its customer, pick that up. And he is painting our Hyundai i30, uh, which is gonna be looking a hell of a lot better. I'm cruising around in my new daily, the Barra Motors van. I'm gonna head back now, I'm gonna get some lunch. Toby's headed off down to the container office to work down there in some peace and quiet to get episode six edited together as a rough draft before I go through and I pick out all the waffle, etc. I need to get back to some of the applicants for our valeting job and try and get some interviews arranged for later in the week. And I might try and buy a couple of cars. We've still got three we need to pick up, uh, or in fact it could be four, we've got four. We've got three in Bristol and one in Bridgewater. The sooner we get our recovery truck back from Vantech, the better, because a wheel stud snapped off while they were changing a tire, so they've had to replace the whole wheel bearing and hub flange and everything. It's gonna cost us about a thousand pounds. Not ideal, but you know, these things happen. Uh, the sooner we get that back, the better, because I could do some running around and collecting off some stuff then. Uh, if not, me and Toby might just have to spend all day going up to and from Bristol, but we'll see. Um, oh, I forgot to say, speaking of Toby, he's been upsetting the local old ladies. He parked in front of someone's house earlier along the road next to the garage. She was not happy. She came in and told us it was not good enough. So I assumed he must have parked across the drive or something or on double yellows, but no, he just parked on the road. It just happens to be that it was in the vicinity of her house. It wasn't across her driveway. It was parked next to her driveway. No markings on the road. It's for anyone to park on, but we should have left it free for people who wanted to come visit her and it's not good enough. And I said, well, you can't reserve parking spaces on a public road, but no, it's not good enough. We have, we, we've been told before apparently and we shouldn't do it. Ridiculous. Yeah, so I'm gonna get back, have my lunch and we'll see where we go from there. Uh, DRL's in, yeah, and I just got to do the um, Blue and Me unit. Apparently, I need to program it into the car. Because the flashy, flashy. Flashy speedo and no Bluetooth. Here is a nice little S1 that we've got through Cars Bought for More today. Actually, from the same street as we got the Cat S Mercedes and the Golf GTD. We thought, oh, this is weird when uh, Josh turned up. I'm on exactly the same street. But they're friends and they recommended us to them, so that was nice. This is a super nice little thing. These wheels have cleaned up well. Look at those bad boys. 240 brake horsepower, four wheel drive, and it's a manual. Fun car. Nice interior, obviously, as you'd expect. Right, so end of Monday, 
I am currently on my way to Western Supermare because I think Sophie's got a bit of a migraine. She's been unwell and she's got a very bad head. So I'm going to go and pick her up from work. I was on my way down to the container because Toby's been working down there all day and he's now edited some videos together. So I'll probably head off after that, go and grab those so I can get tomorrow's video uploaded, which should be a good one, hopefully. It's an auction video. Everybody likes an auction video. So that will be going out tomorrow. Today, Steph and Adrian. Adrian's been having a bit of a nightmare on a Mercedes S-Class um, that we bought in for our cars, bought for more, and we've now sold. He has been trying to sort brakes and the service on it, but all the bolts, etc., were a bit knackered on the... I've just watched someone go up here through this right hander and then cut back in in front again very cheeky yeah so he's a bit of a nightmare with that but that's all ready to go back together tomorrow steph has done bits and pieces but also has been working on the porsche cayman that's been fired up they've been bleeding the brakes together he had to rope in adrian to do that it's a bit of a two-man job no sales sadly we did have the audi s1 turn up and obviously we got to see the Hyundai i30 that James is painting as well. See that's coming along. So I think he said that'd be done by the end of the week. So that's pretty awesome. But then we need to do brakes, tires, and I think I might get the wheels refurbished on that. Jordan's been doing valeting as per, but uh, I have arranged a couple of interviews for the valeter job. So I'm gonna go and get Sophie, make sure that she's okay. Priorities, make sure she's okay, get her home and I will see you guys tomorrow with an update. Good morning, it's Tuesday. Bash and I are on our way to work in the Barra Motors van. Uh, I just had to go up to Western Supermed to collect the van because when I got to Sophie's work last night, I had to take her home in her car, or the car that she's running around in, a little 208 at the moment, uh, because I think originally I thought she had a migraine. She said something about her neck, etc. But I think she's had some food poisoning from a dodgy Greg's uh, chicken bake, I think is what she said. So she was up half the night making dinosaur noises. Why? What? <laughs> Bless her. Um, but she's feeling better today. I've dropped her into work picked up the van, I'm now heading into work, I'm now late because, you know, she didn't really want to get up early, or early, uh, <clears throat> to be fair, she's getting to work an hour early, so, but by the time I dropped her off, picked this up, headed back, I'll be running a bit late, but that's not the end of the world, so today, I know that I need to film a video with Toby, I haven't exactly decided what on, I was thinking there's a little car where I've got a BCA Bristol, but it's a BCA Bristol, and they're having issues with their payment thing, so I can't seem to pay for it. And I've got quite a few cars to pick up, so I kind of really need to get on top of that. It'd be amazing if Vantech call us this morning and say that our recovery truck slash transporter is now fixed, because that would make life a lot easier. But at the moment, I think I might rope my dad into giving Toby and I a lift up to Bristol, and we'll drive one back each. Maybe film one of those cars, or try and film something else so he can just get on that. I don't know. It's a bit annoying that he's booked out for ages, and I can't get any of my stock in starting to get on my nerves a little bit the new guys starts in three weeks there'll be another truck ready for them so in three weeks it won't even be an issue as long as josh doesn't book him up fully full time as well and i still haven't got anything to collect my stock but uh, we will see at the moment it's just i'm getting a bit tired of trying to find solutions in order to collect stuff and having to run around myself the whole point of hiring more people is that i don't have to do as much and i can dedicate my time to the things that i really want to do not collecting cars yeah don't know I'm gonna get in get a cup of tea and check the emails see what's going on this looks like a Mercedes that's going to leave a ramp and a Porsche that maybe not leave a ramp but look at that she's purring look at the engine this could be on the forecourt 
up by the end of the week then. So what was, there was an air leak from around the spark plug, was there? Well, it's just pipes we got down here, the air, in, air pipes for the fluid separator. Right. Uh, and there's, yeah, there's smoke coming out from the spark plug. So it Is this going to need running in a little bit? Yeah. It's going to need a, uh, it's need driving, but not hard. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I should drive this for a while, I guess. Jordan drive. That's fine because I very much like it came in. Yeah, it's not smoking, isn't it? It's quite a around. It's got a engine goes put back on. So those who are haven't followed the story with the Cayman S, had this on the channel ages ago. We did sell it to someone for about fifteen thousand pounds. I mean we're getting it ready, we're like, oh we need to put this and pounds on. So they they're probably like six months old, aren't they? The rest. Uh, they're probably rusty in there. Um, and we said, well, in the prep, we noticed that it would smoke on cold startup. It was fine once it was warm, but when it started, it puffed out some cold smoke. Uh, Steph said, yeah, I'll whip that apart and uh, have a look. But she did, no, took it completely apart. It just scored, just one piston has scored. Oh, in fact, the, the um, not piston, cylinder. The piston is now on my desk as my card holder. But um, yeah, so we had to rebuild it. Then there was a bit of a timing issue. We sent it down to SDS Porsche. Very common thing that happens apparently. So they fiddled with that. Then they dropped it. They dropped the engine and damaged it. So we had to get more parts from them, didn't we? Yeah. And then it rolled around in the back of the van as Josh was Ch bringing it back. Chucked all the oil out, man. Yeah, chucked all the oil out. And it's been a right saga. And then it's been waiting for time to get on with it. Waiting for time, waiting for odd little parts and things that are needed. But I'm impressed you've got it back together. I'm not as impressed yeah. as I am. Yeah, I was going to say, you must be quite satisfied because it's been six months, all these parts have been out and just lying around on barrels and whatever. I'll be glad to see this ramp again. We're glad to see this get cleaned off. Maybe we should get Jordan to do a video on cleaning it and to see it back on the forecourt for, you know, if I'm lucky, it might even be 16 grand these days. Probably not, it's probably 10. Is the dashboard and everything all working? Uh, and it's got the warning light on for the steering uh, yeah. wheel. Yeah. Do you think it needs a new battery as well now? Uh, or it's almost charging? Uh, well, it'll charge overnight, seems to be okay. okay. Oh, did we order a window regulator in the end? Yeah. Okay. But I can't, I'm probably have to open the door to it. It's got the really nice seats as well. Well, you can open the door once we get off the ramp, surely. Yeah, that's why I haven't done it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a permanent display piece now, currently. You may have just saved me from financial ruin. <laughs> just kidding, nothing can save me. So yeah, you've just finally got this off. Probably if I zoom in, we can see the new discs. It's been a bit of the front ones, is it? Yeah. Look at that for a brake pad. When you fit the wrong size discs, and it's overlapping by five mil. Yeah. The ones that were fitted to 335 mil, they should be 350s. That's, I've never seen that before, have you? No. How long until they touched and the brakes didn't work? I suppose the discs are quite thick, aren't they? But They are quite thick, but it's not a lot left. Yeah, they were cleaning the top of the disc off mostly. Yeah, there's no lip on that disc, was there? Let's see where they've been running. So on that side, it's not so bad, but the disc has been running so it still went all the way across the disc. Yeah. But yeah, that is not meant to look like that. No, so that's... So this uh, S-Class that we bought in, we thought cheaply, through cars bought for more, we've now had to do an ABS pump regen thing and disc and pads all around. All right, yeah, and a service. And a service, and then bleed it all up, and all the labor and whatever. Protest, man. Coffee. drink it or frame it. Well, thank you, Jordan. You're welcome. <laughs> that shows how, how hard of a week these guys have had so far that Jordan's willing to make drinks. For everyone, not just himself or one person. <laughs> yeah, Jordan's next one, Jordan, for me. Ready for tomorrow delivery? Right, so it is 25 past six. 
I'm just about to head off home via the supermarket. I've done some after work meetings with Dan, discussing things regarding our MOT center because Dan is going to switch over and do some MOT testing. And admin over at the MOT center. Now that Jason's here on his sales ting and speaking to Josh as well about the transport, which is absolutely flying. Also, you know, we've got another truck coming. We got Macaulay starting, uh, which should free Josh up a little bit to then a, do Barrow Motors jobs, and B, we can go out and drum up some more work, start building a monster of a transport business. Um, that done, go home and see my darling love, Sophie, get her some food. Obviously she had food poisoning. I don't think she's eaten much since. And I am taking this Mercedes C300H. It's a hybrid that we bought from a subscriber, Parvin. Thank you very much, Parvin, for using carsboughtformore.com. Just thought I'd take it home, see how it drives. Uh, I think Josh would have taken it for a quick test drive, but I haven't, and I like a Mercedes. So I'm gonna take this home tonight. I haven't got to bring Bash in tomorrow, so that's good, I'm not gonna get it dirty. We can get Jordan on valeting it, and Jason on listing it. And I've spotted as well, shout out Parvin, absolute top man, for a little gift that's in the passenger footwell. It says, four staff at Barrow Motors. And there's a box of celebrations down there. I'm starving. I'm tempted to crack those open and start eating them and take them home. But I won't because Parvin's gesture is so nice. I ought to share it with the staff, really. I suppose, as if they haven't got it good enough already. So yeah, thanks very much. From now on, any car sport for more customer has to leave chocolates in the footwell. That's so just the new rules, I'm afraid. But make sure you do check it out anyway. Uh, that's it for Tuesday. I will see you in the morning. Wednesday, quarter to nine, I'm driving into work in this C300H, which I have to say drives a little bit weird. I don't know if it's because it's hybrid and it's got some electric motors working at the same time, but I think maybe even the tracking one's doing it. It just, you can't seem to get it to steer quite straight. I mean, it will steer straight, but going through these country lanes here, you just feel a bit like you're you have to just give constant input. You know, most cars will just track. You know, people say it tracks like a train or whatever, like it's on rails, which is what you want. You want to just feel like it will just drive along in a straight line with zero input. There's just something about this. I can't tell if it's little electric motors on the wheels kicking in and, you know, pulling from the front rather than pushing from the rear, and that's making it feel a bit weird, but something is going on that's a bit, I think maybe just tracking because these roads, kind of uh, have a camber to the left so that all the rain runs off. So usually they pull to the left, but this seems to be pulling to the right. Now, just heading on to the other side. So maybe it's as simple as tracking and that's throwing the whole thing off, but there is definitely something a little bit not quite right. But we will figure that out. This thing's got to have a bit of body work anyway. It's just a bit of a bizarre feeling. My uh, high mileage BMW 320D is a bit like that. I think that needs tracking again, because that just feels a bit, kind of skittish and it might even have just a flat tire on there. It's not a flat tire, but maybe just like a low pressure tire. It just seems to pull to the right in a weird way. Anyway, it will get in the workshop. We'll get it checked out. I don't think it's anything too drastic. Famous last words. Toby is off today. No film editor, videographer person because he is doing a wedding, not getting married. He's not is not ordaining the marriage, he's not a priest. He's just taking pictures of it. So that's a nice little gig for him to go and do in between filming some fat guy talking about cars. We've got Macaulay coming in, who is obviously starting for us on the 16th of the next month, but he has a day off and he's willing to do some sort of overtime jobs. So he may come in tomorrow on the Thursday and do collecting these four cars, but still relying on having our truck back. We're getting a body made from Carter Commercials. They are gonna collect our Asda truck, chassis cab, from DW Commercials, who we have bought that from. They're gonna put the two bits together, make it all up, and then within a couple of weeks, hopefully, we should have our new truck. We'll get it back, we'll give it a good clean up service. Might even get Dan's MOT course booked today. Had another chat yesterday. He still seems very keen on doing that, so may as well get it booked. Um, they don't seem to come around all that often. I think the earliest we can get one is in about November, and it's gonna cost about a thousand pounds, plus the VAT, etc. So uh, get that booked, 
so that we've got two testers ready to go for when we get the buildings, when we get all that sort of stuff in. And I need to remember to take our box of celebrations in for the guys at Barrow Motors from Parvin. Thank you again, Parvin. Oh, so I was actually trying to break into it. Uh. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll check the cameras then and call the police. What's well, the first time you've had anything like that? Well, the camera is there, so. I thought, I was looking at the one, I thought they might have spun it, but they haven't. It's still. These are the keyless ones I always get next. I guess so, yeah. They failed on this occasion, though, didn't they? They probably would have targeted this one, wouldn't they? Because of what it is. Low mileage, all that sort of stuff. They probably had it lined up for parts. Yeah. Must have been disturbed if it had it. Which one they got glass on the roof, though? They probably smashed it in and f just flicked it off themselves or something. They, yeah, they must have got disturbed if they've left the screwdriver there. How many hours do you think before the forensic police team will want to come out? This time next year? Yeah. Um, I would never, actually. Probably never. Uh, I, I would say for the recording. Someone's seen it online, I expect, and targeted it. Right, let's call the Popo. Do you want me to just order up the parts for it? Please say the name of the police force you would like to be connected to. Even in Somerset. If you want to be connected to Avon and Somerset Constabulary, say yes or press 1. Connecting you to Avon and Somerset Constabulary. Welcome to Avon and Somerset Police Non-Emergency Line. Your call today will be recorded. Reporting non-urgent police matters online helps us prioritise urgent incidents. And We're currently experiencing high call volumes. We appreciate your patience and your call is important to us. Avon and Somerset Police Switchboard, how may I direct your call? Hey there, I just want to um, report an attempted break into a vehicle, if possible. Okay, when did this happen? Uh, it would have been last night sometime. I'm just checking the CCTV. I, I own a, a car dealership in Bernard C and um, they've smashed a window and even left a screwdriver, which I thought might be of some interest. But... Lovely, okay. Let me walk you through to our control room. He'll be able to take all the details from you. All right. Brilliant, thank you. No problem. Two thousand years later. Hello. Hi there, I'm calling from Avon and Somerset Police. I'm just returning a callback request. Hi, yes, thank you very much for calling back. Uh, I'm just calling to report an attempt to break into one of our sales cars at our forecourt. Do we have any idea when this happened? Uh, about 2am this morning. About 2am. Assuming it's on CCTV? Uh, it is, yes. Yeah, yeah, two persons have kind yeah. of walked over and they've smashed a window. They did end up leaving a tool behind. But um, I can see from the video they're wearing gloves, etc. They smashed the window of a vehicle on the forecourt. What window was it that was damaged? The driver's window. The driver's window. Yeah. Did they go into the vehicle or open it at all or try and take uh, anything from it? Or? I don't think so. I think they ran off as soon as the window smashed. What was it that they used to smash the window? I don't think they've deliberately smashed the window. I think they're trying to flex the door open and it's just shattered. Right, and okay. They've run off. But there, there was a, a screwdriver there. Not as far as we're aware, no. No. In terms of the screwdriver, can you describe that to me? Uh, yes, it's a blue snap-on screwdriver. Sorry, I should take that back. It's it's black with green bits on it, the screwdriver, not blue. And I'm assuming it's sort of like your regular sort of metal screwdriver part with like a plastic handle? It is, yes. Yeah. And have you, have you still got that on site? We have, yes. And do we have any descriptions of the people who were there at all from the CCTV? Not really. It's not the clearest. No. All I can tell you is one was wearing dark clothing and one was wearing light clothing, but that's about it. Okay, and did they arrive on scene in the vehicle themselves, as far as you can tell? Um, I, uh, they, they've walked onto site. Driving out the building. In reward, you get a present. 
It's a Model S 3000, 300 even. It's yeah, a smoke. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Hello. What a multitasker you are, Jordan. I know, right? Imagine how effective you'd be if you weren't on the phone at the same time. I'm even going to take the doors off and move all of that off. Yeah, you can see it's done. Have you seen the... Um... Yeah, that's obviously a screwdriver mark. Screwdriver mark's all on there. I can't find where that light goes into there. Um, dangling from the steering wheel. It's a bit grubby. <laughs> What's it like to work on a car from your era, Steph? This, is, this car is actually Adrian's era. It's, uh, I wasn't even a stain in my old man's shorts when this thing was came out. You were two? I was two. Yeah. Your fault then. Yeah. What year was this? 64, I think it is. Okay. He remembers it well. The Beatles were at number one. <laughs> yeah. The the, um, the desktop investigator did ask if we'd kept the uh, screwdriver, screwdriver. And, he said, yeah. and I said, yeah, we have, but I do have a mechanic who's got his eye on it. So worst case scenario, they might come in and ask you for it. Where is it? I have told Steffi is not to have it yet. Ah. For that exact reason. Steph, would you like this? This is quite nice. I like the family friendly RX8. This? Yeah. What? Oh, because of the... Because of that. Yeah, that was smooth. Suicide doors, baby. Yeah, so you can literally open up both doors and just boot kids in. What a machine. I don't dislike them though. If I was gonna have a vanilla family car, you know. Yeah, it's kind of like a Zafira. It's got, yeah, it's, it's a bit nicer than an Astra, isn't it? Well, and a Zafira, yeah, like you said. Great car. Rather an insignia though. Like a new insignia, they're quite nice, I quite like them. Mm. Do they even make them anymore? Mm. Like this sort of age. So when you say a new one, you mean 10 years old? That's new in my heart. Yeah, and mine to be honest. <coughs> right, so end of day, I'm just leaving Esso after having put 50 pounds of Supreme headed in this Cayman S. Long time viewers of the channel will recognize this. I've had it on the channel almost a year ago and uh, it sold. We had an engine rebuild, it's taken a long time. It's been on the ramp for about six months or at least, you know, off the road for six months. But now it is back together and I have been tasked with kind of giving it run in after its rebuild. So I am taking it home for a couple of days reporting back to Steph who has rebuilt this on you know what's going on with it how it's driving just making sure that everything goes okay it looks okay so far no warning lights obviously we couldn't give this to someone like Jordan because he would floor it just making sure that everything goes okay but the good news is it's rebuilt and it doesn't smoke on a cold start which is a problem that we had before so one way or another, there should be about £14,000 coming back to me in the near future as a result of this car. Smaller margin than we would have had out of this car in the first place because we've now spent probably a couple of thousand pounds on putting it out. Including uh, new disc pads all around. Obviously, we've done an engine rebuild, new piston, blah, 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 blah. 
and the price has gone down by about a thousand pounds so it's uh, not going to be as profitable this time. Obviously this morning I came into a broken into car, the Fiesta, someone's tried to steal that overnight so now I've got repair bills on that. I don't think it's likely to be worthwhile trying to claim off the insurance so I'm going to be footing the bill for that. So thanks very much. If anyone gets any information on people who are stealing Fiestas, especially in my area, let me know. I'd like to have a word. Despite that, it's not been a bad day. Got this back on the road. And the net result is I'm still happy at the end of the day today. So I can't really complain too much. I can see I'm about to run out. Typically my other camera has just run out of memory. Must have filmed too much for you guys today. I'm trying to give you all the quality content. Should have had two interviews today for the Valator roll. One of them turned up, one of them didn't. So that's not very good. Not looking good for him, to be fair. But the other guy seemed good, so um, there's at least someone there lined up for that position. Um, yeah, I can't remember anything else. Maybe I'll give you an update in the morning. So, good night, see you tomorrow. Managing uh, credit says, do you say discrepancy? Do you say discrepancy? Uh, my amount of speed, I changed on that. The that folks, this guy's original black on the HPI. Yeah, it's not an original color, is it? Yeah, it looks like it looks like a possible no change of guys. Okay, so what was about 20, yeah, that's 24,000 miles in about 24,000. I'll put a bit of 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 a bit
Except when she is away. Except you know about this window sketch. Sunshine when she's gone, and she's always. Oh, show me the technique. Just a bit flappy, is it? When did you suddenly get musical taste? I always had musical taste, mate. Normally it's. <laughs> you didn't want to hoover up the glass from the Fiesta before you uh, brought another car in, then? Uh, no. No. I'm hoping that none of these parts in the boot are essential. You know when um, I bought those exhaust gaskets because they're missing, these triangular ones? Is that them? They're the ones that were... Um... And I take it none of the O-rings and bits and pieces in the boot of the Cayman are essential to the operation of the Cayman. Those ones, right? But I didn't know it had to take the engine gas. Oh, okay. And it had been apart for so long, and when everything got moved, I just shoved it in the box. Next time you come up, I'll point you in the direction. Vehicles over 10 years old, the vehicles are over 100,000 miles. Well, you can see the MOT pass rate, which is 79%. There's a mileage tracker, which you check and see if that's always going upwards. Steadily, no dip down, I think there might be. Who, um... Yeah, the wheels. Yeah, you. I'm, I'm, and the back ones. Yeah, basically. Sand pit outside the house, the curb was covered, and I reversed up against the curb and realised that I'd gone up the curb and then fell down the curb. Oh Wait. dear, Wait. is the other side as bad? You'd think that side would be worse, wouldn't you? You would do, that's usually the worst one this side, but. A brave old age. Yeah. Go on then, give us, give us a rev as you go. He's still got a bat foot. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Whoa! I, I was look, sorry, I was looking through here. <laughs> For <fuck's sake. laughs> I went you on the front one. <laughs> I mean, put a reverse camera on it. I was jokingly going to be like, oh, what should I say to say, like, keep going, keep going? And you literally just kept driving into it. I turned around here. Right, so end of day, heading home. Jordan's staying on to do a bit of overtime because he wants it, not because I've asked him to, but he's getting on and polishing the Mercedes C300 H hybrid thing that uh, we bought in through Carsport for more the other day. We've had Macaulay in today. He's been doing transport. He's not actually starting until the 16th of next month, but he had a day off and he was willing to work in his days in between, which has helped us out because we have always got lots of transport work going on, hence why we need another driver so uh, he's been in today he's done four collections or at least he's on his way back from doing his fourth dropping off a write-off BMW 1 series thingy for me at the farm Toby and I might do a video on tomorrow depending on what it's like we'll see uh, I'm heading home in the van which needs fuel so am I gonna pull in here no this fuel stations ram packed toby edited the what was it b-class video today got that all done and it actually uploaded in like record time at work which is very unusual so that's going out tonight in about an hour and a half i think i've nailed down the logo i want to use that i've now made myself because using a freelancer on people per hour was becoming a bit painful this is for the mot station of course so I've got a logo together in mind for that, so that means we can get on with getting like business cards, getting uh, liveries and things. I mean, I won't jump into doing that just yet, but as soon as the, uh, you know, I've got a date for getting the building, then we can hop straight on it and start getting those things 
done, we won't have to then start thinking about doing it at a later date. I seem to be stuck in traffic because I think someone's knackered old caravan has broken down here. This is what we get a lot of. So yeah, the wheel has fallen off completely by the looks of it. Or they've tried to jack it and it's collapsed. And we've got a police car here as well. It's interesting. Oh God, no one's going to let us go. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we got the police here, so someone's just abandoned it, I imagine. Probably because it was nicked. Being based on weather, there's a lot of caravan tourists, touring caravans. I'm surprised there's not tighter laws on the tyres because you would not believe the amount of people who pop in, oh, could you change a caravan tyre for me? Because they don't ever move, do they? So they just sit there, not wearing down the tread. So they think the tyre's still great because it's still got eight mil of tread on it and it's not gone anywhere. But what they don't seem to realise is that it's completely perished. It's got dry rot, it's not moved. It's, you know, the elasticity of the rubber is gone and these tyres just kind of just blow up. So oh, that's interesting. That was a um, covered trailer for like the production company and it had something about at Mr. JWW, isn't he a, like, car influencer guy? This is where I show my absolute lack of car knowledge, really. I'm sure that'll be something to do with that. I'm gonna Google that when I get home later. That Mr. JWW, he does all like supercars and whatever. Not really my bag. I would, but you know, I'm just not into him. I would have, I've got the money in there, obviously. Interesting, I wonder what's going on in Burnham on Sea with him. Or maybe it isn't, I don't know. With all the excitement of that, I forgot to get fuel going past that fuel station. So do I risk it getting home and then back to work again tomorrow on what is a 10th of a tank? Uh, yeah, why not? live dangerously. Anyway, that is it for Thursday, really, unless I run out of fuel and break down. If I do, you'll be the first to know. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. Right, it's Friday. It's actually midday. I have been at Burr Motors this morning. Uh, Toby's doing some editing, or has been doing some editing there. I've been replying to some emails, sorting a few things out, and I've started doing some website building. I'm trying to get a shifting metal website off the ground so that we can get some merch out to keep going on and on about it, and I haven't done it. Uh, in my defense, I'm a busy boy. So I'm gonna try and do that today. We're both heading down the farm. Jason's listing cars. Steph is changing a gearbox on that car that I told you about that was a kind of noise on the gearbox or whatever as a warranty type thing, so we're changing that. Dan's on doing some brakes and MT stuff because we still don't have Adrian back in. I don't know if he's actually got COVID or he's just expecting that he probably will eventually test positive for COVID, so therefore he's just staying away. I think the general consensus among everyone else at the garage was that you may as well stay away. Let's not risk it. No one else wants to get COVID um, and be off work, really. So he may as well stay off, get some rest and relaxation. I've had COVID twice before and it was not lovely, but I, I got off lightly, I think. Um, so either way, it's fine. Everyone has got everything in hand back there. Jordan's cleaning cars so that Jason can get them listed. Uh, I thought I would pop down the farm and work from there. Try and have a bit of clear focus to work on this website. And I need to go home quickly, grab a few things like t-shirts, hoodies like this, caps, etc. So I can get pictures of them, get them listed on the website. So when that website is live, When's this gonna go out? This won't be this, this won't be tomorrow, this will be the week after. That's my goal. All right, so my goal is for next Saturday, when you're watching this video, that website will be live, which will be shiftingmetal.com or something. 
I'll put it, or Toby will, on the screen here so that you will know where to go. If you want to buy some merch, support the channel, all of which gets put back into challenge videos, things like that, then that will be on the screen now. So with that said, I will see you down at the container office. Here's our one series. Doesn't look too bad actually. Quite like the colour. Looks all right, doesn't it? Obviously we need to get it off and uh, sort that out. Mark's here sorting out some ground works by the looks of it. Okay, so finished filming with the one series. Toby will probably edit that up tomorrow. And I think we finished with the thumbnail and all that sort of stuff for tomorrow's BM Weekly. We had a little debate whether we could, you know, we could make it so that you have a literal daily episode uh, of the Bear Motors Weekly. Rather than doing it as a weekly, you'd have a daily. Let me know what you think in the comments. We started to think that actually that would get in the way of posting other videos. It would be a lot to keep up with. People probably wouldn't want to watch daily videos. Um, I mean, I, I quite like the idea of the format of an hour. If I was watching someone else, I'd watch an hour long rather than six ten minute long videos. So but let us know what you think in the comments. Anyway, I am finishing up now. It's oh, half five. Uh, everyone will have gone home and whatever. In fact, I know they've gone home because now I have finally got my CCTV set up on the TV. Look at that. So I can sit here at my desk. This screen can be gotten rid of now. And all the CCTV will be on there. Barometer's reception, the new garage. This is at the front of the container. Uh, yeah. All the stuff that I need and want to keep an eye on while I'm working, make sure everyone's working and uh, things are going okay. So yeah, that's, that's great and actually it's a really nice display, very clear. So I'm very happy with that. Also framed up some pictures to go on the wall here, that's just a Porsche Boxster. I, I, I got wanted to pick a car from the garage at Borough Motors and that was just like one of the ones that I had at the front there, so that was about the best thing that I had at the time. Here is a motorbike, a BMW R80, that I custom built. The track car on the track at Castle Coombe. So maybe later I'll get them up on the wall there. We also have Megan. Say hi, Megan. Megan's staying with us. Our poodle friends are away on holiday. Megan is staying with us, sweet girl. Um, yep, Toby's gone home. I better pack up his computer, I guess, to take to the garage for tomorrow. We have young lad coming in tomorrow to do his trial day of valeting, so we'll see how that goes. I need to chase up about that trailer I was going to go and look at, because he was meant to be back Wednesday. Never heard anything, uh, and I've just forgotten as well. So maybe I'll send a quick message for that. Then I'm going to uh, sort out some more CCTV bits, extend some cables and head home. So I'll see you tomorrow for the last day of episode seven. Here I am, baby. Signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. Right, good morning. It is Saturday. I'm heading into Barrow Motors. I've had a message from Dan who is off ill once again. This is becoming quite common. Uh, he was up being sick, apparently. Um, so, no Dan today. I think Jason has some handovers. I got a feeling Jason's even coming in at 8 o'clock tonight to do a handover of one of Dan's sales. We will find out in a bit. We've got Jordan in who is, oh, and we've got the new Valata lad coming in for a trial day with Jordan today. Obviously Toby will be in, he'll be editing some uh, weekly footage and a BMW 1 Series video that we filmed yesterday. I'm going to get on with some admin, I've got website building to do, emails, etc. So I'm going to try and hide away from the daily runnings of things today so I can get on for a few hours with some of that stuff. So I will see you back at the garage. Good morning, it's Sunday. I'm just heading across the field here because I spotted a little sheep in distress caught in all these brambles over here. Jumper caught, so I thought I'd better come over and free him up if I can. Oh, see him. 
didn't think he'd be very happy about this, but all right, calm down, calm down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, now he's free. I guess that's all it took was a bit of terror. And now he's got uh, a load of brambles caught to the back of him. Oh well, good deed of the day done. So yes, it is Sunday. Don't get used to this, I don't normally film on a Sunday, but I didn't really film very much yesterday. So A, I thought I ought to give you a catch up from what happened yesterday. And I'm on my way down the farm because at the end of last week's BM Weekly, I said I wanted to try and set up my little home gym at the farm in one of the stables. And that is what I'm gonna do today. So I've got the work van loaded up with the majority of the kind of gym stuff. I think Jordan's gonna come down and give me a hand because he's keen to gym it up and uh, help out. So I'm gonna try and get on with that today. Yesterday was quite busy in the end. I can't remember exactly what I was doing. Would have been doing admin. I've spent a lot of time trying to build a shiftingmetal.co.uk website. So as I probably said early, earlier in this video, that should be live by the time this video is live fingers crossed and the web address is going to be shiftingmetal.co.uk Jason sold three cars which was awesome in fact he did a double deal with one couple and sold two cars for them one of which was the Mercedes GLC as well he just put the price back up a thousand pounds um, he did take most of it back off again letting them know that he'd just done that but sometimes price movements in either direction can help stir up some interest in a car it's funny how it works it's not just downward prices that attract people sometimes it can put them off they think why is it so cheap great news that he's got that sold i am coming down with a bit of a cold i feel got a bit of a sore uh, sore throat coming on i'm a bit sniffly and i've just been feeling really hot i can't exactly tell what the temperature is today but i am quite hot today is it just because i'm lifting gym stuff around or am i getting a bit fevery I don't know. I think I'm going to be all right. Adrian, who went home with a COVID scare, actually didn't have COVID, still testing negative, but he did feel rubbish for a couple of days. So he might have just had a, a nasty cold and maybe that's what I've picked up. So fingers crossed. I'm still planning to be in work tomorrow. I'm still planning to build this gym. I might even try and have a little workout later. Who knows? So uh, yeah, that's the plan for today. I'll try and film bits and pieces, show you the end result. So I'll see you down the farm. So this is what we're working with. I think from memory, this is 14 foot by 14 foot. Obviously, first job is to sweep all this hay and everything out, and then put some of the foam flooring down, and then figure out where everything's gonna go.
right, so this is the bulk of it done. Got a sort of free weights bench over here, which I'll use with the two 25 kg adjustable weight thingies. But I want to build like a little support for them to be on the wall there. So I'm going to keep picking them up from the floor. And then you can sit here in front of the uh, mirror, do your shoulder presses and whatever. So you've got a bench which doubles into a squat rack thing. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it does the job with a flat bench, which is adjustable as well. My little weight rack thing that I welded up there. And then my pulley kind of cable system thingy, which I'll probably show you better in the mirror. Pull down and put weights on there. And you can do all that sort of stuff. More weights from home to go on there. Then what I'm tempted to do, let's say I'm gonna build a little kind of shelf thing here for these weights to go on. I'm also tempted seeing as we've got some space here and we've got uprights, pretty reasonable distance apart, 16 inches I guess. We build like a little dip station and maybe a pull-up station out of some timber that I have kicking around down here at the farm. So uh, I'm gonna do that quickly. Okay, so here is the end result so far. I made a little shelf to put the weights on. So that's tied in there with the mirror. Got the rack for squats. I'll probably get another one of these cheap range mirrors for doing squats and stuff. Uh, got the resistance cable thingy. I've also got up here, I found when I was doing some tidying up around the farm, that is one of the old kind of locker bars off of the container, which we took off so that I could put a different kind of lock on it. So I'm going to attach that in there and that can be a pull-up bar as well as cleaning stuff and whatever. So um, I am not going to be doing a workout today because to be honest, I've had a bit of a workout anyway, just from uh, strimming and mowing and diggering everything around here today. While well, Jordan's been busy uh, taking an engine out of his old 330D. He's actually managed to get it out. So whether that ever moves back into another car again, who knows? I don't really want a completely dead car sat there forever, but we shall see. Anyway, that will be it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already. It's free to do. It will really help out the channel. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And don't forget, shiftingmetal.co.uk should now be live. I'm going to kick myself if it isn't. But there's a page on there as well that's called Discounts and that will have all of the discount codes that I've got from some of our sponsors. So if you're looking to get anything new, make sure you check out there first. Make sure you can't save yourself a few quid. Anyway, that is it. Thanks so much. See you next time.